The countdown for the launch of Columbia on Space Shuttle Mission STS-62 is continuing on schedule this morning. Uh, we're currently in the standard two-hour built-in hold at the T-minus three-hour mark. Launch of Columbia on Mission STS-62 remains on time to occur again at 8.53 a.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39B. And we have live video of the crew at breakfast. Seated in the center is Commander John Casper. On the end, we have our uh, mission specialist, Pierre Thuet. And seated next to him is our pilot today, Andy Allen. Again, Commander John Casper. Mission Specialist Sam Gaymar. And rounding out the five-member crew is uh, the lone female on board today, Mission Specialist Marsha Ivins. All five members of the flight crew were awakened at about 4 o'clock this morning. Following breakfast, they will be given a briefing of today's launch time weather and start putting their flight equipment together. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding. The ICE team continues to make their assessments of any uh, abnormal buildups of uh, ice or frost on the external tank and other shuttle components. Currently, they are standing on the mobile launcher platform <laughs> upon which rests the external tank, uh, the solid rocket boosters, and, of course, the orbiter itself. We have about 20 minutes remaining in our hold this morning, and we're standing by for a live video of the crew donning their flight suits. And we do, in fact, have video of uh, the crew in their crew quarters, which is located in the operations and checkout building at the Kennedy Space Center's industrial area. Commander John Casper preparing to make his third trip into space today, putting on his communications cap. Casper is from uh, Greenville, South Carolina. And he'll be flanked uh, by our pilot today, Andrew Allen, who was born in Philadelphia. Andy Allen is making his second trip into space today. And writing a hello to Jessica and Meredith. And taking a more relaxing pose, of course, is uh, another member of the flight crew. Marsha Ivins sees herself in the mirror and sees herself on NASA Select TV. And she looks ready to go. She's, uh, they've all been in town since uh, this past Monday afternoon. Marsh is making her third trip into space today. Mission Specialist Sam Gamar has just picked up what might be the sixth crew member. Uh, this is uh, Theodore Tracy. And he is given to the crew by the students of the Gulf Gate Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. Of course, we're checking on the status of his health stabilization. Mission Specialist Sam Gamar, again, one of five crew members that will be flying today. Sam's prepared to make his third trip into space. Back to our commander, John Casper. This is shuttle launch control, and we are at T minus three hours and counting. And the 
who are exiting the three quarters at this time. Commander Casper, Pilot Andy Allen, Mission Specialist Marsha Ivins, Pierre Thewitt, and Sam Gamar. The uh, crew have arrived in the White Room, and Commander John Casper is presently being suited. He will be the first to enter the vehicle. Piloting our flight today will be Andrew Allen. He is being assisted right now in making final preparations uh, to be placed into the orbiter. He was selected as an astronaut in 1988 and is making his second flight into space today. Mission specialist uh, Pierre Thewitt is uh, making his third space flight today. He'll be the next to enter the orbiter. Mission specialist number three, Marsha Ivins, is making last minute checks before she uh, prepares to enter the vehicle. Sam Gamar is mission specialist number two, and he will be the last to enter the vehicle this morning. The other is already uh, in their seats at this time. Okay, John. Well, it looks great down here. Uh, hope to give you guys and uh, Marsha a great ride here in a few minutes. Okay, well, just want to thank you, Bob, and all the uh, folks on the world's greatest launch team for all your hard work that you put in to get us ready to go. And we're looking for a safe and successful mission on Columbia. Well, thank you, sir. It's always a privilege and a pleasure. And the MPD, you have a go to proceed. I copy. Thank you. And the countdown clock will pick up in two minutes. PLS is go for OAA retract. The orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle. And it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. T minus seven minutes and counting. Final gimbal of the main engine bells is now underway. This is the final check of the main engines prior to launch. 
CLT, OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Roger and work. T minus two minutes, 20 seconds and counting. All is ready to fly today on NASA's four and a half million pound space shuttle vehicle. Caution warning is complete. Thank you. Orbiter test conductor has requested that Andy Allen clear the caution and warning memory system, and that has been, been reported complete. Flight crew, close the mark your visors, initiate O2 flow, and have a... T minus two minutes and counting. Roger, that's done work, and thank you. Okay, let's go for ETH2 pressurization. Everything continues to look good for launch this morning. In about 90 seconds, the Space Shuttle Columbia will begin its 14-day extended duration orbiter flight one of the longest in space shuttle history. One minute 30. T minus one minute and counting. T minus 50 seconds and we're transferring to orbital internal power at this time. Columbia is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20. 15. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4. 3. 2. 1. And liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia as NASA continues on the cutting edge of microgravity research. Houston's now controlling. Hold on, Houston. Roger, roll, Columbia. Mission Control sees a good roll maneuver, placing Columbia on the proper heading. Three good engines at 104%. engines are throttling back now, easing the buildup of aerodynamic loads as Columbia continues to accelerate rapidly through the dense lower altitudes. Three engines now at 67 percent. Columbia is traveling over 500 miles an hour at 52 seconds. All systems are performing well. Columbia, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. All three engines are now running at full throttle. All systems are performing well. Altitude is now 59,000 feet, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Columbia is traveling over 1,000 miles per hour at 1 minute 29 seconds. Columbia continues to climb at a relatively steep angle at this point, relying heavily on the solid rocket boosters to triple its rate of speed over the next 60 seconds. Delivering a combined 6.5 million pounds of thrust, the boosters will burn out and separate at 2 minutes 6 seconds. Time now 1 minute 48 seconds. All systems are performing well. Altitude 116,000 feet, downrange distance 18 nautical miles. Mission Control sees a good booster separation. Columbia is now flying free, powered by its own main engines. Second stage guidance is now in control. Altitude 184,000 feet. Columbia, performance nominal. Performance nominal.
That's an indication that the boosters have done their job as designed in the main engines as well. Altitude is now 198,000 feet, downrange distance 44 nautical miles. Columbia is now traveling over 3,000 miles per hour. This is Mission Control Houston. We're taking live television through the Goldstone Tracking and Television Station in California as Columbia completes its first orbit of the Earth on this 14-day mission. Currently, the crew is in the process of opening the, uh, the latches of the payload bay door along the center line. Once the center line latches are all confirmed open, the bulkhead latches, both uh, the forward and aft, will be opened. And once they've been unlatched, the uh, motor drives will be commanded to begin driving the doors open. As at this point, the uh, starboard payload bay door is in motion. That we have a good downlink, and uh, that's some tremendous camcorder footage. External fuel tank uh, later re enters the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean and burns up before reaching the surface. Tell you what, Pierre, your uh, ET photo uh, downlink has had everybody just captivated down here. It is just absolutely awesome. Up until that point. That call from the crew indicates uh, they're now starting to power up Columbia's mechanical arm, seen here in a live television from the spacecraft. It's Mission Control Houston. That uh, television view from Columbia's lower deck showed uh, Mission Specialist Sam Gar Gamar working with the Advanced Protein Crystal Growth Experiment, or APCG, and uh, activating the thermal enclosure system for that experiment or test.
And Pierre, we're real happy with the view. Uh, the EISG folks are going to send some commands shortly, and uh, we should should see some uh, motion in the mirror. Okay. There, something just flipped. Yeah, we saw that. Uh, to allow the flat panel portion to be inserted into the slot at the top of the carrier. And uh, the insertion of that uh, flat panel portion will be aligned using a camera that's on the side of the magnetic end effector at uh, the end of the mechanical arm. This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, live television from Columbia's payload bay shows the task bar for the dexterous end effector and uh, currently in work, uh, an insertion of it into the slot at the top of the carrier for the uh, end effector equipment. The task bar is being held by a magnetic end effector uh, at the end of Columbia's mechanical arm. Once it's inserted into the slot, uh, simulating a task that might be used in the future uh, for space station construction with a radiator, uh, the panel will be rotated uh, to about a 30 degree angle, both forward and aft. Out in the bay here, you see on your left, uh, just above the little American flag, uh, one of our furnaces, semiconductor furnaces called the FISCO, and there's another cylinder over on the right. Those two furnaces are doing uh, semiconductor crystal growth experiments, and the benefit there is uh, better, higher quality, faster semiconductors, and that's used in making computer chips that go in all of our computers and, and uh, telephones, wristwatches, and, and a lot of things that we use today. Now in the back, behind the, uh, behind the Mephisto furnace is another uh, ram, large cylindrical looking experiment, and that one's doing a solidification of metals, and here we're looking at how metals solidify with the potential benefit there being of making stronger, lighter weight metals to aid the automotive construction and shipbuilding industries. This is Mission Control Houston. The lid is now opening for the limited duration candidate materials exposure experiment in the cargo bay. The LDCE experiment holds a total of about 250 samples of various materials that are under study for use in uh, spacecraft in building future spacecraft. And uh, we'll study the wear experienced by them and how well they hold up in the low Earth orbit environment.
picture, John. We, yeah, we got the picture, John, and we see the door opening. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, we're receiving some videotape replays provided by the crew of Columbia orbiting 140 nautical miles above the Earth. Now looking at the opening of the instrument door for the Space Shuttle Backscatter Ultraviolet Experiment. Houston, this is a picture of our little experiment on board. We're looking out the aft window, and through this little module, you can see uh, the reflection of the own pod and the tail. We heated this up in, uh, in our galley here to get a little bit warm. So it's all a gas that we're looking inside here. As it cools down, this gas, which is Freon in this experiment, is going to go ahead and reach its critical point, and the temperature and pressure will come to this point that's defined the critical point, and the properties of what we are looking at will change. a couple minutes, and I'll fast forward through a little bit of it, but uh, let's go ahead and let it run for a second. This is Mission Control Houston. Right now we're taking some live downlink television pictures from camera D in the payload bay. That's one of the low light cameras in the arsenal cameras on board. The flashes that you see and the glow are thruster firings as Columbia maneuvers into a new attitude with its belly facing in the direction of travel. foreground, uh, there's a diagonal plate running at about a 45 degree angle. That is the plate from the experimental investigation of spacecraft glow, which is looking at the interaction of spacecraft surfaces and atomic oxygen in orbit. Columbia is now approaching the Midwest and uh, we'll cross off the northern east coast of the United States. Also uh, moving into sunrise. Tag team, uh, this is CBCG. Uh, we're growing crystals in the little unit. You see above the very bottom black and I'm recording the temperature right now. And what we're doing is every day we take video of each of the uh, uh, proteins top tray to not only, uh, well, the main thing we're trying to do is trying to characterize how they grow in space and to really understand how they grow. This particular day was a day where we did all three trays, and we also did 35 millimeter photography of all three trays. One thing I can add about CPCG is it's really a two-person job. Uh, Marcia very carefully aligns the uh, light and pulls the trays out, and I have to get the camera all set up, focus, and... Uh, align the uh, polarizing filter to get, get it all set up to take the picture, so it really takes two of us to accomplish this task. I just picked a select uh, bunch of these. Some of them are very dramatic like this one, some are not so dramatic, but I wanted the uh, investigators to have an idea what they all look like or, uh, you know, on the cross-section of the ones we did.
numbers are called the gaps in those little things there, or what they call the SPAs, just so that you can correlate your uh, checklist acronyms with what the real pieces of hardware look like. And uh, Sam's pulling in close near now to see some of these. Uh, we're growing really fine filaments. This is the set that we terminated yesterday by mistake, so I just thought I would record all of them. Okay, we have a great picture. It sort of looked like really fine ribbons tied off at the top and the bottom. Now here's a sprout. This sprout's grown to the end of the tube now since the first time we looked at it a couple days ago. This one has some sort of fuzz growing on it. It's the only one I've seen like that. Copy. Okay, this was from the CGBA photo set three, and I show you this because that's the only swimming behavior. You see that little guy was swimming around in circles. Um, there's another couple guys swimming around in this one, too. And we got a good uh, image of that, Marcia. Columbia Houston, we see you looking at Spec 22, just for your info, uh, the IM user and such good shape that no align is required today. Okay, that's two days in a row. Looks like they are in good shape. Mission Control Houston, we're now receiving downlink from the Space Shuttle Columbia where the SPS-62 crew is getting started on its work day. Sam Gamer is getting prepared for his ramp test in the lower body negative pressure unit. That's a 45 minute test within the lower body negative pressure unit and the same procedure will be repeated a little bit later today by pilot Andy Allen. Just so you all see what we're doing up here with uh, 8, this is our configuration. We've got the uh, Nikon F4, a uh, image intensifier, then a 50 millimeter lens, then a grating, another 50 millimeter lens, a slit, and then another lens, and all that looking out the payload bay uh, when it gets dark to try to catch the glow.
and then turn the image intensifier on. And this particular pass, we were shooting uh, at or orbiter glow, the glow phenomena that we see when the atomic oxygen impacts the orbiter, and using the image intensifier to uh, to uh, capture. See, it's because your head's got some, your neck's got some stuff in it there. All right. This is Mission Control Houston. Commander John Casper is in the middle of his exercise session with the uh, bicycle ergometer. Uh, you can see in this picture how much the ergometer sways and uh, moves as a crew member vi as a crew member exercises. Uh, if this exercise device were uh, hard mounted on the shuttle floor, uh, these vibrations would be sent into the orbiter structure and could very possibly disturb the microgravity environment in which the uh, cr protein crystals and the other experiments need to conduct their science. You get a picture? Yes, we do. and uh, we got a good view of that. To that, it certainly looks like you're making maximum effective use of all the space you have there. Sure that. And we have a good view of the flight deck and a pilot who's ready for bed.
about this vehicle is hurling through space at uh, 17,500 miles an hour. We're basically traveling five miles every second across the surface of the Earth. And uh, it just goes to show you what trust and confidence uh, this team up here has on the team on the ground, uh, because we know that, uh, that you guys uh, are doing your job down there and doing it well, uh, watching over every aspect of our safety and the performance of this orbiter. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it makes me proud to be a part of this team. And, and I worked on the control center for uh, 12 flights myself, and, and I was very proud of the control I was in. And, and again, when you come up here on orbit and, and you put that kind of trust and faith in those people, it, uh, it should all make you proud, very proud. Andy, I know we were a bit redundant because we played the uh, service medley a few days ago, but I think you'll appreciate the, the song for this morning. Uh, I think uh, when you get your mail, you'll find out why. We got news this morning in our morning mail. This is a momentous occasion, and uh, we're going to have a little ceremony here. I want to turn it over to our, our administrative officer here, Mr. Spirit to it. Attention to orders. Mission elapsed times, 5 days, 19 hours, 25 minutes. Aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia in Earth orbit, in recognition of 17 years of distinguished service to the United States as a Marine officer and demonstrated potential for future leadership and responsibility, the United States Marine Corps has selected Andrew M. Allen for promotion to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. By the authority vested in me as commander of the Space Shuttle Columbia, I hereby promote Major Allen, effective immediately, to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel for the duration of this space flight. Signed, John H. Casper, Commander, STS-62. Okay, Major Allen, front and center here. Okay, then we have the Mark 1. Mm -hmm. here on board the shuttle, though. Mod 0, if I can get it out of here. Frankfurter. Ah, there we go. Now, this is a double Frankfurter sandwich. But we will. Let's see if I can. Well, too high. Hey, look at that. That's that's how you make talent, a hot dog in space. Mm, a little too high. Oh, 
tank tank off. All right. Columbia, Houston, good morning. We like the tans. We did a uh, supply water and wastewater dump today, and the dump really looked pretty bright at sunrise. As the sun hit the ice crystals just at the right angle. And this is the view out of the commander's window, window one. This is a mild job. I'm going to take that in. Okay. okay, ready, ready, stop. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is great. 